So, you know, I said this in words earlier. That the hydrostatic pore pressure is just the pore pressure that you get by integrating the density of water down to that depth, or it's the head pressure, right? So as a good estimate, it's just the density of water times gravity times the distance uh, into the earth, right? And so you get you get hydrostatic pore pressures where you have very well connected pore pore networks. So very permeable, uh, very permeable media. Also, um, you know, if you have highly connect, connected fracture networks all the way up to the surface. So things like sands and other things, you'll get fairly hydrostatic uh, pore pressures in those regions. Okay. So some, some other times we, we talk about the pore pressure in terms of this uh, lambda, which is the ratio of the pore pressure to the vertical stress, okay? And so since the vertical stress increases at, since the vertical stress increases at one PSI per foot, and the hydrostatic head of water increases at 0.44 uh, PSI per foot, then for the hydrostatic case, this lambda is 0.44. There's no units, the lambda is unit. Um, so in the case where lambda equals one, where the pore pressure and the vertical stress would be equal, which in reality you can never achieve, okay, you, can, you can get close to it, uh, but in reality you can never achieve that. Uh, but in that case, then, then that's, there's a name for that. It's called lithostatic. Okay? So sometimes you'll see it as an approximation. You, you might see in a in a paper or in a problem for this class that you know consider lithostatic pore pressure conditions. So this is this, we're talking about lambda equals one that the the pore pressure is equal to the vertical stress. Again, can never be achieved in reality, but as an approximation. So here's some actual data. This is uh, the Monte Cristo field. It's uh, it's in the in the onshore area, not too far from here actually. So it's onshore Gulf of Mexico here in Texas, and uh, this is actually pretty characteristic of the Gulf of Mexico. But you'll see an initial sort of right here. That is almost hydrostatic. So I think. Which is it? I think this says 0.46 psi per foot. So it's almost hydrostatic down to some depth, uh, down to about 8,000 feet, and then you see this transition zone, and then over here it's almost lithostatic. So it's that's that's lambda equal 0.91. So here the pore pressure is almost, it's very very close to the vertical stress, right? And I guess what's interesting about this plot. Is that, you know, this distance, the difference between the hydrostatic and the overpressures at depth is, you know, it's almost double. The pore pressure is almost double uh, at, at deeper depths. So this is a very good thing, of course, for production. That's why we, that's why we like the Gulf of Mexico, right? Because, you know, this is fairly characteristic of the Gulf of Mexico. Anybody know why? I'll ask you that in a few minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll revisit that question. And, uh, and so, of course, this is a, a good thing for production. So, So uh, this is a field in Egypt, and the interesting thing about this plot is that you have, you have, we talk about compartmentalization. So, you know, compartmentalization is just sort of what it sounds like. You, you could have a region, a very well connected, sort of a highly permeable region, say sand, that above and below is encapsulated by an impermeable, say, shale. Uh, 
And so what you see in this, in this reservoir, which is very compartmentalized as you go down, is that even though there's transition such that the, the pore pressure as you go down continues to move to the right, or, you know, so this is the, this is the hydrostatic line, and you see as we, you know, it starts off at hydrostatic, but as we, as we move down, it continues to move to the right, increasing the pore pressure. But in each sort of highly connected region, which are represented by these, um, the, the, the white areas here, in each of those regions, the pore pressure sort of increases with, at the rate of hydrostatic. So if you notice, the slope of the line, the slope of the pore pressure change in those regions is roughly hydrostatic, right? But the, but the compartmentalization continues to increase the pore pressure as you move down. And so that's, that's an indication if you're looking at you know, if you have information of pressure logs as you go down, that's certainly a, an indication that these regions are highly connected permeable regions, right? Because the pressure increases at hydrostatic. So they're, 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 they are disconnected from each other, okay? They're seals. These, these gray areas are seals. But in the connected region, the pore pressure changes roughly hydrostatically. Hydrostatic, whenever you see a hydrostatic, whenever you see pressures increasing in a hydrostatic, you know, according to this slope, that implies a well-connected region, right? Because hydrostatic is just like if there was a column of fluid there and, and no material, right? So this sort of implies that there's just a column of fluid here. And of course, there's real, there's material there too, it's just, it's highly connected. The water, the, the material, the uh, fluid can move through it easily.